Hello students, let us go ahead with the next session and uh, this is going to be under states of matter itself. <coughs> In today's class, we are going to study regarding laws of crystallography. Today's class, we are going to study about the laws of crystallography. Crystallography is a branch of science which deals with the geometry, properties and structure of crystals and crystalline substances. It is a branch of science. Crystallography is going to be a branch of science which deals with the geometry, properties and stru structure of crystals and crystalline substances. It is based on three fundamental laws. And the three fundamental laws are law of constancy of interfacial angles, law of rational indices, law of symmetry. So, the three fundamental laws of crystallography are law of constancy of interfacial angles, law of rational indices, law of symmetry. First, Coming to law of constancy of interfacial angles. Coming to law of constancy of interfacial angles. This law states that the size of the faces or even shapes of the crystals of a substance may vary widely with conditions of crystallization. That is, even though if the size of the faces or even the shapes of the crystals of a substance may vary widely with the conditions of crystallization. Yet, the interfacial angles between any two corresponding faces of a crystal are always constant. That is, the size may vary. The sizes may vary due to the conditions of crystallization. But, the interfacial angles, but the interfacial angles between the corresponding faces of a crystal, between the corresponding faces of a crystal, will always remain constant. For example, the interfacial angle in all sodium chloride crystals, the interfacial angle of all sodium chloride crystals is found to be 90, irrespective of the size and shape of the faces. Next is law of rational indices or this is called as house law. This law states that the ratio between, the ratio between the intercepts on the axis for different faces of a crystal can always be expressed by rational number. This law states that the ratio between the intercepts on the axis of different faces of a crystal can always be expressed by rational number. The intercept made by any face on the crystal on the crystallographic axis are either the intercept made by any face of the crystal on the crystallographic axis are either same as those of the unit plane or simple whole number multiples of those unit planes or one or two intercepts may be infinite. If a line is parallel to one or two of the axis, the faces do not cut each other. So this law of rational indices states that the ratio between the intercepts, the ratio between the intercepts on the axis for the different faces of a crystal can always be expressed by a rational number. Coming to the next one, that is law of symmetry. Law of symmetry states that all crystal of a substance possess same elements of symmetry. This law states that all crystal of a substance possess the same elements of symmetry. And the three important elements of symmetry are, the three important elements of symmetry are plane of symmetry, axis of symmetry and center of symmetry. Coming to the plane of symmetry. Plane of symmetry is going to be an imaginary line which can divide the crystal into two halves such that one is a mirror image of the other. Plane of symmetry is an imaginary plane. It is going to be an imaginary plane which can divide the crystal into two halves such that one is the mirror image of the other. A cubic crystal has two types of 
plane of symmetry a cubic crystal has two types of plane of symmetry and they are rectangular plane of symmetry and diagonal plane of symmetry in a cubic crystal there are three rectangular plane of symmetry and six diagonal plane of symmetry which will which we shall see in the next few slides coming to rectangular plane of symmetry these are the planes situated midway and parallel to the opposite faces these are these are planes which are situated midway and parallel to the opposite faces since a cubic crystal has six faces three pairs of opposite faces it has three rectangular planes so i have i have shown you here two types that is this is going to be placed in between this is going to be, i can place one like this also i can place one as such so that is going to be so i'll be having three rectangular plane of symmetry so these are the plane situated midway and parallel to the opposite faces next is diagonal plane of symmetry these are the planes touching the opposite edges these are the planes this is going to be a plane which is going to touch the opposite edges they lie on the diagonal of the opposite faces they are going to lie to the opposite face and these are termed as diagonal plane of symmetry since there are 12 edges since we are going to have 12 edges or six opposite edges six pairs of opposite edges so we will be having six diagonal plane of symmetry so i'll be having we are having 12 edges which gives rise to six pairs of opposite edges so i will be having six diagonal plane of symmetry next is going to be axis of axis or line of symmetry axis or line of symmetry is an imaginary line or axis about which the crystal may be rotated it is an imaginary line or an axis about which the crystal may be rotated so that it presents the same appearance more than once in the complete rotation through 360 degrees it is an imaginary line about which the crystal may be rotated so that it presents the same appearance more than once in the complete rotation through 360 degrees in a cubic crystal the axis of symmetry may be of three type in a cubic crystal the axis of symmetry may be of three types depending on the number of times the identical appearance occur depending on the number of times the identical appearance occur during the course of rotation through 360 degrees i am having three types of axis of symmetry that is four fold axis of symmetry or axis of four fold symmetry axis of three fold symmetry axis of two fold symmetry in a cubic crystal there are three axis of four fold symmetry four axis of three fold symmetry six axis of two fold symmetry so overall i'll be having 13 axis of symmetry so this is going to be an imaginary line over here which is going to pass through the center and when this is going to be rotated through rotated through 360 degrees cell 360 degrees four times the same face appears so an imaginary line passing through the center of two opposite faces of a cube so in case of in case of four fold what do we find is a line will pass through the center of the opposite faces and when it is going to be rotated through 360 degrees 360 degrees four times the same face four times the identical face is going to appear identical appear identical type appears next is going to be three fold symmetry in this case the line is passing through the opposite corners it is going to pass through the opposite corners when this is going to be rotated through 360 degrees three times the identical type appears 
in this case here the imaginary line will pass through the opposite corners of a cube and here i'll be able to see it three times three times while rotating it to 360 degrees the pattern three times the identical pattern appears in case of two fold symmetry the imaginary line will pass through the center of the two diagonally opposite it will pass through the center of the two opposite diagonal opposite edges of a cube so this one when it is rotated to 360 degrees what happens is only two times the identical appearance appears so in a cubic crystal i'll be having i'll be having three <coughs> i'll be having four fold axis of symmetry here four axis here i'll be having four axis three fold symmetry here i'll be having and in case of two fold one i'll be having because i'll be i am having six opposite here it will pass through the opposite diagonally opposite so i'll be getting six pairs so it is going to be six two fold axis of symmetry so overall i'll be having 13 axis of symmetry coming to center of symmetry it is such a point in a crystal it is going to be such a point in a crystal that any line drawn through it a point in a crystal when any line is drawn through it it intersects the surface at equal distance any line drawn from it it is going to intersect the surface at equal distance on either side a crystal may have one or more plane of symmetry axis of symmetry but it will have only one center of symmetry it will have only one sem center of symmetry so the total number of symmetry elements in a cubical crystal will be i'll be having totally nine plane of symmetry 13 axis of symmetry and only one center of symmetry so the total number of symmetry elements is going to be 23 so in today's class we have studied the laws of crystallography we have got plane of crist we have got plane of symmetry we have got axis of symmetry and we have got center of symmetry in plane of symmetry we have studied two types that is rectangular plane of symmetry and diagonal plane of symmetry and in axis of symmetry we have studied three types one is four fold axis of symmetry three fold axis of symmetry and two fold axis of symmetry and center of symmetry so this is all about in today's class okay thank you